Pass Pass, I mean, Soul on Ice, classic album. Hey, um, while he's uh, making that phone call, I would love to know about the Horseman, man, and how that whole history came about, how you guys got delayed in that situation, and how you eventually released this dope project just a few years ago. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, so, ironically, like, um, I kind of never, I, I, I kind of didn't have a click, you know, the, uh, the rest. Of, what up, Yazzie? I see Yazzie in the building. That's my, my, uh, my, my better half of, of my social media. So, yeah, it handles all that. My work wife is, is, is what they call them. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, around the same time, um, which was, well, maybe a little bit later, maybe so, so maybe about 97, 98 ish. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lady named Wendy Day. So, Wendy oh, has, yeah. has Rap Coalition, and Wendy's just amazing. She helped a lot of artists, period. She helped UGK when they was in a bad deal and she helped him and them she helped the locks she helped brass cash she helped david banner she helped the gang of mcs um you know uh when they got she was just an advocate for for artists not getting fucked over um mm -hmm. east west north and south she helped cash money get they deal too um but uh she was doing this thing called rap olympics which i think they should bring back and yeah. To make a long story short, there were these teams. It was going to be this 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 battle, like four man battles. Mm -hmm. So I think Wu Tang was going to have one. Red Man, like Death Squad, like Keith Murray and Red Man was going to have one. Nas and so and so. So all these teams, there's all these teams, and uh, we. I, I remember Corrupt called me like, "Yo, you going to be on my team?" And I was, and then I was like, uh, "Well, that's dope," uh, but. I got cannabis on my, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have cannabis on the team, too. And then he, he he was like, well, then fuck it. We'll just all be a team because I want Killer Priest on the team, too. And I didn't know Killer Priest. I already knew cannabis. He was acquainted with cannabis. I knew cannabis more. So, really, uh, we came together to do that, that battle. And then, slowly but surely, all the signed artists started dropping out so for us it just it didn't it was never uh um it wasn't worth it because we wanted to battle the, you know and we wanted to battle the homie from Wu-Tang or or mm. Red Man and whatever you know we like you know it, it, it was just more skin in the game uh right. it ended up being a lot of brothers that's super dope that just weren't signed at the time so we didn't do it but we ended up doing a song together and and what we realized is again that as as a uh, you know as battle rapping MCs, it was because we kind of really technically what we are is uh, slaughterhouse before slaughterhouse, right? Exactly. You're taking you're taking kind of the the more lyrical MCs out of a clique, and in our case, Dog Pound Corrupt is the you know he's the spitter spitter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, not taking nothing from the rest of them. Everybody's magical, but he's the battle rap, like the lyrical dude. Um, uh, you know, Pillar Priest comes out of just a very lyrical camp. Cannabis was down with the Fugees, but he was like battle rap supreme. He was going at it with, you know what I'm saying? He's just the nasty new kid on the block. And then, you know, and then me. And so, yeah, we, we, uh, we, we went for it. I always had a problem with getting my groups, uh, we couldn't get records made. <laughs> like, mm. we could record and make records. We couldn't keep it together to get the records out for one reason or another. A lot of times, it wasn't really our fault. It would be, you know, I signed the Priority Records really because of NWA. Okay. and wanted mm -hmm. to be part of this legacy. And what I didn't realize was that Brian Turner and them didn't know they asked from the chair they were sitting in. So a lot of times, my stuff got <laughs> fucked over because... I did the wrong thing for the right reason. I signed to, to a label that didn't they didn't get what I was trying to put down. They they thought everything was gonna be as simple as in WA and California raisins, and it's not. Mm -hmm. I read when uh, one of your albums came out where it got bootlegged heavily before it even came out or something like that. Yeah, um, that was the third album. That was the Van Gogh album. Yep. Yeah, that's a dope name too. And uh, how do you feel about that, man? Because you know, I, I know back in the day I had some artists. That um, I did the this, did this street album, and some of the cuts got bootlegged, and the guys got pissed at me because somebody bootlegged their shit. Like, man, how you listen? My well, first of all, you can't, back in the in the uh, CD day, you can't control that shit. Once you got the CD, you got a master. 
How did you feel about? Right. How did you feel when they started bootlegging your shit? That's a sign. That's a sign of uh, appreciation, but it's also a sign you're about to get fucked. <laughs> how did you feel? How did you feel <laughs> well, that? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it was hard to stop that hemorrhaging because it was happening from the manufacturers. Mm. It was happening. Like there was so many places you could get fucked. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally. Right. The studio could fuck you. The you know and the mastering could fuck. I never really heard about Bernie Grumman fucking nobody over, but you know, just the people that manufacture the CDs or the vinyls, they right, could fuck right, you. Right. Uh, the, the call could be coming from the house. Somebody at the label then ordered some white labels on the side to fuck you. You could right. be, like it, it was always so it was hard to manage that uh that hemorrhaging. Um I, I always, you know, ultimately of course I'm in a business, and I wasn't Tupac. I didn't sell the kind of records that Tupac did, so I needed all my sales. So it was a disadvantage to me, period. Okay. You know, I've always felt like that. Of course, it was a disadvantage because I'm in a business with a company that wants to make their money back. And so for me to be able to be financed, I need the people to support the music. I, I still tell people that to this day. Like, you know, back in the day, I would go out and buy everybody's CDs, right? Um, you know, this is back when CDs were 18 bucks or whatever the fuck. Right, right. But as as those people that I bought became more and more successful, Marlon Cozy. Okay. Yeah, but I was, I, I was, I, as they got more and more successful, I stopped buying their brothers. I mean, uh, buying their brothers. I stopped buying their CDs because they didn't need my help. So, for instance, I supported Jay Z. His first album initially didn't even go gold. It was considered a flop. Mm. So I supported mm -hmm. Jay Z. I supported so and so. But then Jay Z starts selling four million records. I'm not buying this shit. I need to buy the other brother that's talented right, 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 that needs right. some help. So I always took that approach because I understood the business of of, of of this. Like this is a mm. hard form, but we need we need to have commercial success in order to keep it going. It's, like, it's almost like a plan. I always tell people like. You got to water the plant. You can't just have a plant and think it's going to give you a whole bunch of fucking, you know what I'm saying, the best fruit. And, you know what I'm saying, your shit going to be popping and big shade, nigga. You ain't never fed it. You're going to have a dead-ass plant. And, uh, you know, that's how a lot of careers go by the wayside because people, you know, I was never mad at niggas for getting their money, but you was fucking mine off. And okay. I was never mad at the people because I want people to hear the music. But, again, you know, people, you know, we needed to support in right. WA. We needed to support Tupac. We needed to support Razzcast. We needed to support Kendrick. We needed to support Dog Pound. You, know, you got to support people. You know, um, we just we got a real fucked up understanding about you know even especially nowadays. You know, niggas um, don't really understand how much it costs just to make a record to make one. I don't care if you cut in corners, and then Come they on, act like you like niggas will really not even listen to your whole song. And then tell you 